skaters doing that on our own you can do what we can do. Oh, it's great. It changes everything. It's just fun. It's um, coming home somewhat. So, uh, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to experience uh, Nation tomorrow and in the game. And I'm excited about it. So, Tim, we ask you every year, it seems, when are the Gators getting a quarterback? What's, what's <laughs> going on there, do you think? Why, why can't they seem to identify one since you've left? You know, I think that um, they've been able to recruit some some big time guys, but it's just um, you know it's some there's you know quarterbacks have been you know streaky and you know I, for a while Luke was playing pretty good. He had a couple games where it wasn't his best. Um, started off the season pretty hot, and after that Kentucky game, you know you think, hey, you know this is someone that's that's doing pretty well, and we'll be interesting to see when he gets healthy what he can do again, and um, you know we'll see what Appleby can do tomorrow. What about the freshmen? Do you know anything about those guys? I know a little bit, but you know we'll see. They're, they're freshmen, and you know they've been in practice, but practice is a lot different than games. I, I know you're not. You know you're objective in this position you're in, but you are a Gator, and you are a quarterback. I mean, is it does it get a little frustrating for you, or what do you think the feeling of fans is about this whole situation? Well, yeah. And your fans had their way. Their, their team would score every single possession, and that's not really realistic. But I think McIlwain's someone that knows how to co coach quarterbacks, and he, everywhere he's done, his quarterbacks have succeeded. So I think you know he'll continue to work with the quarterbacks, and and you know he'll get the offense right. What do you think about uh, Coach Matt? He's almost had two seasons under his belt. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I think he's been able to um, get a lot of wins and you know put the Gators in position to go to back-to-back -back SEC championships. And um, so I think from that standpoint, it's good. I think um, you know there's there's still a lot of work to be done, and um, you can see that from last week's game. But um, I think they're getting there, and um, just got to continue to develop a lot of young players. What about? Sorry, go ahead. What about offense? What do they need to do tomorrow? Does they have to score? <laughs> score a little bit more. Um, Put, put some drives together, gain some momentum. Don't make it just be a, one or two plays counting on that. You know, Create a, an identity as an offense and then be able to stick with it where, okay, you know, this is this is kind of our go-to, this is our bread and butter, and then you can play action, do everything off of that. And I think that they're still looking for a big time identity on offense. So you guys are gonna be in Baton Rouge next week for the tour yes. LSU game, it's obviously pretty high game this season because of everything that happened and no question. you had some memorable games there especially in 09 jog your memory a little bit but what was that uh, that whole week like for you with the concussion and everything like that uh, it was a stressful week <laughs> the whole week was so stressful trying to convince everybody that I could play and <laughs> for them to let me play and hoping that I was gonna get to play and just yeah it was a stressful week but it ended good, so it was fun. What, what do you was that one of your like hardest weeks of preparation or just adversity? Maybe well, it wasn't one of the hardest weeks of preparation because they didn't really let me prepare like I usually would have. I usually would have been in the film room studying so much, but they were literally kicking me out because you know I was supposed to be resting my brain and not studying and staying in our <laughs> rooms, and it was a terrible week. But. Well, we, we won, so it was good. And what, what do you remember about that game? And, and I, how remember, it went? I remember the first ride, Patrick Peterson blitzed off the left side, and we did a waggle left protection. And I hit, um, gosh, I can't remember who. I think uh, Cooper? Might have been Cooper on an outcut. And, um, and Patrick hit me, and I got knocked down. I just remember. I, I threw it to the left sidelines, but Coach Meyer was the whole time staring at me. Like, he didn't even watch the play, because I knocked down, I was looking from the ground. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, he was just so worried, like, was I going to be all right? Because that was the first time I got hit after the concussion, so, yeah. You gave him a thumbs up? I gave him a thumbs up. What, what so it's not worrying so much. You'll be all right. What does Florida need to do to get some of the playmakers involved with, that, with the kind of shaky quarterback situation right now, people like Antonio Callaway? Well, I think it's get a little bit of confidence and momentum. You know, I touch on that a lot, but I really believe in it when you're dealing with 18 to 22 year olds. Confidence and you know, getting in a rhythm and some momentum is so important because all these kids have so much talent. But sometimes the difference between getting it done and stalling is is the confidence to believe in yourself and momentum behind you to be able to rally the troops a little bit. And so. Yeah, to get Antonio Callaway in the game early, get him a play or two, and you know, and give the quarterback position a little bit of confidence, and 
you know, loosen the secondary up to get the running game going, I think all that's huge. Uh, what do you see as the key matchup in uh, the Florida South Carolina game? I think it's the second Florida secondary. I think they're the. I think they give Florida the biggest edge in the game, but I think they have to play good because Jake Bentley's been really improving every game he started and um, made some really good throws last week. And you know he's like, okay, now you're making all of us emotional. And so it's definitely an emotional day. It's surreal. It's a lot of fun. Um, but I think you also want to be able to walk to that stadium with a good memory of your senior day and. And so that, that's up to the players. If they're going to show up and do their job and, and, and get a W, and that's going to make senior day a whole lot better. What about Will Muschamp has a chance to come in here, get some vindication, ruin the senior day, I'm, and send Jim McElwain probably close to the hot seat with a lot of fans? I'm sure that um, I'm sure that Muschamp loves the opportunity. I mean, Muschamp's competitive and. He did some really good things here at the University of Florida, and he's doing really good at South Carolina. And um, you know, he knows how to coach defense, and he's getting that defense better. And now he's got a freshman quarterback, and he's got a good kicking game, and it's kind of the recipe that that can work in the SEC a little bit. And so, you know, he's been riding some big wins, and I'm sure he'd love to get another one. I mean, it's kind of a crazy dynamic, though, isn't it? I mean, this guy was coaching here less than two years ago, right? I mean, that's most places in the SEC. There's pretty crazy dynamics. So, but yeah, South Carolina does like getting Florida coaches. So, a couple more guys. Tim, with uh, Jared Davis and Alex Anzalone out for this defense, what do they have to do to fill that hole? It's it's huge. I I don't know if you can fill that hole. I think they were the two most impactful players on defense so far this year, and both of them really, when you're running a four-two, they're they just they run around and they make plays all game long and. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna miss them a lot. And yeah, you always say the politically correct thing as a team. Well, it's next man up. You gotta step up. But I don't think that there's anybody in the roster that can fill those two positions. And that's not a knock on anybody else. That's just how much I think of those two players. I mean, they're tough. They're physical. Both of them can run. I mean, th those are you know the entire year when I'm talking to all the string coaches. Those are two of the top guys that I always had for freak of the week here in Gainesville because of what they can do in the weight room but also on the field and how they show up every week and so that's, those are huge losses and also leadership wise they're two of the toughest guys on the team so both of them to be down I think it's a big loss. You mentioned the second week in November before you really have a family like that. How does that happen? How do you find one? How, how have you not found one by this point in the season? Well, you, you, injuries, um, miscues, not being able to get things um, rolling, not being able to find that one or two plays in a game that kind of triggers you where everything just is so much easier after that. Um, you know, I think there's been chances where it's looked like, okay, it's starting to click Kentucky game. You know, early in the Tennessee game, there's been certain times where it looks like it's starting to click and then just something doesn't go well. And um, But we'll see what happens tomorrow.